Welcome to the Devworm channel and today we are going to be learning to add a real working animals to your Godot game just like these chickens with animations they move around randomly they free roam they do whatever they want and they have different animations different states different moods but before we get started I just want to ask if you can go down there and hit that subscribe button and drop a like on this video so more inspiring game developers can learn to make their own Godot games as well but without further ado let's get started let's make these working chickens step by step okay so to get started with adding the chicken we need to make a new scene and we're gonna make this a kinematic body 2D. And then we can name this guy chicken, because this is gonna be our chicken. And inside of here, we're gonna need an animated sprite. We're gonna need two different timers. So I'm gonna explain, you know, what both of these timers are gonna do as we get going. But our first one is gonna be our change state timer. So it's gonna be like changing the state from walking to eating to whatever all the different states you want to have in your animal right and then we're also going to need another timer and for this timer we're going to name this our walking timer just so we can randomize the ways that our chicken ends up walking and then we need a collision shape just so we can collide with some different items in the game right so first of all for our frames i'm just going to go through and make these frames real quick we'll have a walking animation and for our walking animation, I have this art pack right here. And if you want to download the exact same art pack, the art pack will be linked in the description below. So you can go and download it from itch.io. It's not mine, but you can go download it from the original creator and we can work on the exact same chicken, right? So these first three frames here are going to be our walking frames. And I'm going to make this like eight frames a second, just so it's a little bit quicker. And then if we quit playing, you see, that's kind of our walk. And then if we have a new animation, we'll make a new animation for eating. And our eating frames are gonna be these three right here. As you can see, it goes down, it looks pretty good. And that's our animations, right? So our collision shape, we can just go with a little circle around the chicken, which changes to walking for now. Right, then we can go and we can make a chicken chicken script so the chicken.gd and in here we're first of all let's signal our timeouts from our different timers so we can go to timeout to our chicken and same with our walking timer timeout to our timeout whoa timeout to our chicken script so basically now when those go when those timeout we'll have our our we'll, we'll have the functions already set up and ready to go now Inside the script, we're going to need a bunch of different variables. For example, we need eating, which is going to be a boolean, so false. We need var walking, which is going to be false. Or, yeah, I guess I guess it will be false. We'll save the scene. But this is going to basically be so, like, if we're eating, then we're not going to be walking, right? But if we're walking, then we're not going to be eating. So this is basically just to keep track of that. It, I mean, I'll, I'll go a lot more in depth in it here in a minute. We're going to need var for our x direction. And I mean, these probably don't make any sense right now, but they will here in a minute when I go through and kind of explain this stuff in more detail. But if we got like one is going to be equal to right and then negative one is equal to left, right? So if you times, if you have motion.x equals speed times direction, that's the direction you'll go. You'll go left or right. Right, and then we'll have our variable, which is going to be our y direction, which is going to be equal to 1 to start. And 1 is going to equal down. And negative 1 is going to equal up. And then we're going to have our of our speed, which is going to be equal to around 5. You don't need it that quick. I mean, it depends on what animal you have. Obviously, if you're building some type of like cheetah or something like that, then yeah. You might need a, a bit of a quicker speed, but we're building a chicken, so we shouldn't need much speed. Motion is going to be a vector 2, just like so. And then we got var, one more variable, which is going to be moving, vertical, or horizontal. All right. So this is basically going to be a bunch of different uh, variables which are all going to play a part here in just a minute I'm gonna as as we go through the code obviously I'm gonna explain it in a lot more detail than what I'm doing now but one is gonna equal left or right 
and then or I guess one equals horizontal horizontal and then two will equal our vertical because this is for we don't want to be moving sideways and up at the same time right we don't want to be able to go in a diagonal we only want to be able to go up or down or left or right at one time so we're not moving in multiple directions all at the same time right but if we go to our change state timer we'll work on this first so basically let's make a variable and this is going to be our wait time which is going to be equal to one wait time equal to one and then we'll basically check if walking is equal to true right because this means we want to change the state so we want to change from walking to eating right so basically if walking is equal to true then we'll say eating is equal to true is equal to true and walking is equal to false and obviously we're gonna have a physics or we're gonna have a process function up here which is basically gonna say if walking is equal to true then it's gonna have the walking code and it's gonna say else if eating equal true then it's gonna have the eating code to make the the character eat or the chicken eat right so we'll do this and then we'll just do wait time is equal to a random range right and one to we'll go with like five seconds and we'll basically choose a random time in here and then we'll set the wait time to this right so it's always random so it's it's not like consistently the same exact thing it's going to be all randomized right so that's what that's for and then we'll do else if eating is equal to true then we'll do walking equals true eating equals false and then we'll do wait time wait time equals a random range from like two to six and then we'll get our timer so we'll get our change state timer dot wait time is equal to our wait time variable and then we'll do change dot timer dot start so I'll basically play this again once our wait time goes off so it could be one second could be four seconds could be five seconds could be 3.6821 seconds it doesn't matter it can be any seconds so it looks a lot more random right now on our walking timer this is going to be so our chicken can go up down left right and all those different directions randomly this is just so we can change the state from eating to walking right so basically when we're walking we're going to be playing this time out so we can change directions and it looks natural right so we'll have a variable x equals a random range from one to two and then we'll have our y equals a random range to one to two and then we'll get our or we'll make another local variable which is going to be wait time equals random range from one to like four and then we'll go down here and we'll do if x is greater than 1.5 so basically we have a 50 percent chance right so a 50 percent chance to change the x direction to one which means we're going to be moving right so this would mean we'll move we're moving right else which means we have a 50 percent chance to get under 1.5 and if we do get under 1.5 then we'll go negative one which will be left so we have a 50 50 chance on left and right and then we'll also do if y is greater than 1.5 1.5 y direction equals either negative one or else y direction equals negative one so basically this means we have a 50 50 chance to go up or a 50 50 chance to go down right and then down here we will basically do the exact same code we have here we will set the wait time to our except we need this to be our walk walking timer Basically, we'll set our wait time to our wait time variable, which is going to be a random range. So 
obviously we change random times so it looks more natural it looks more random and now basically our chicken it will choose random directions and we'll go random ways by this random range on a timeout every one to four seconds right so with this now we need to go up here and make a physics process actually let's make a ready function real fast so we'll make a ready function and in our ready function what we are going to need is basically walking equals true so we'll do walking is equal to true and then randomize so basically what this does basically makes it different each time walking equals true basically just starts us off walking so we start off walking so we start off in some state so we can start to transfer states based on because if, if we're starting in no state chicken's just going to be stuck there it's going to be idle it's not going to work but now let's make another function which is going to be our physics process and in our physics process we're going to have another variable which is going to be wait time wait time and keep in mind this variable is different from this variable they're two completely separate variables right because they're both local variables these are global variables to the script so all these can end up using these variables these variables can only be or this variable can only be used in the physics process function this variable can only be used in here just just want to point that out right so basically we'll do if walking is equal to true so basically if we're walking then what are we gonna do, right? We need all of our stuff. So first of all, we need our animated sprite, dot play, and we want to play our walking animation, right? That's the very first thing. And then we'll check, let's say, if moving vertically, horizontally is equal to one, which means we're moving horizontally, which means we're moving left or right, then that means we're gonna be wanna be on the X axis, right? So we'll do if X direction, is equal to negative one and then we'll do uh, so if if x direction is equal to negative one which means we're going to be going left then that means we're going to have to get our animated sprite dot flip h flip horizontal equals true and then basically if x direction is equal to one then we need our animated sprite dot flip h to equal false basically this allows our animation to flip so if we're going left our character will be facing left if we're going right our character will be facing right right and then we'll come down here and we'll get motion.x is equal to speed times x direction which if x direction is negative one then it's going to times our speed so our speed is going to end up being negative five if it's positive, our speed is going to end up being positive 5. Motion.x, if you go positive, you'll go right. If you go negative, you'll go left. Right. So that works. And then we also want to go motion.y equals 0 to make sure we're only moving in one direction at a time. Right. And then we'll basically come down here and we'll do else if moving vertical or horizontal is equal to 2, which means we're going to be moving horizontally. Well, motion.y to equal speed times our y direction. And then we want motion.x to equal to zero. So we're only moving in one direction at a time. And then we'll come make another if statement, which is going to be if eating. If eating is equal to true. Then we'll go and first of all, we need to play our eating sprite or our eating animation. If I can type, if I can type, I obviously can't, eating sprite. And then we also, if we're eating, we want motion.x equals zero. And we also want motion.y to equal zero, right? Because we don't want to be moving at all. So that looks good. And then we also need a move and slide motion just so our chicken can move inside so we can move around on the screen and look good right or and actually have visuals so we can actually see him moving right and then we will also want one more thing which is going to be if walking is not true because basically if walking is not true we want to have 
or I guess when we're eating, which means walking will be false. So when we are eating, in that time we want to have a decision made if we want to move horizontal or vertical, right? Because right now we'll end up just moving horizontal, right? Right now we'll only move horizontal because this variable is set to one and nowhere in the code do we change it. So we'll make an if walking is equal to false. So if walking is equal to false, which means we're eating, which means we have time to make this decision, we'll have variable x equals random range from one to two. And then we'll do if x is greater than 1.5. So basically we have a 50-50 chance to go up or down. And then we'll do if it's greater, then we'll have moving vertical dot horizontal equals one. And then else moving moving vertical horizontal equals two. So basically we have a 50-50 chance now to go horizontal or we have a 50-50 chance to go vertical, right? So this looks good. Now, this should work, right? So if we go to our 2D scene, we can go and instance this in our world. So we can go to our world, world, and then chicken, TSCN. We can bring this right here. We can play and the chicken moves. It looks cool, looks good. Is it randomized though? That does not look good. The, uh, okay, the chicken is broke. So let's figure out what's going on, right? So, okay, okay, so I think I know. So in this code, we never, we never call the timers, right? So these timers never end up ever going, not once, so we can't end up going through the loop, so we can't end up changing stuff. So our change state timer needs to be set on auto start. Our walking timer also needs to be set on auto start. Now, hopefully, there we go. So now we're eating. Now we're going up. Now we're going down. Looks good. Now we're eating. Looks good. Now we're going forward. Or oh, we're going to go left. Eating. Left. Boom. Okay. That's a chicken. That's a working chicken. Boom. Okay. And you can add multiple of these because. And they'll all act completely different. They won't act the same, obviously, because we have in our chicken, we have the randomize right here. But uh, yeah, that looks super, super good, right? So we have a nice little chicken animation, a nice little working chicken who roams around, runs around, does whatever he wants, like a chicken would actually do. And he's about to go off screen and he's now off screen. Okay, so now we got a lot of chickens, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you did enjoy, and if you did learn something important today, then I hope you can go down there, hit that subscribe button so more inspiring game developers can see the exact same videos, see the exact same series, and learn to make their own Godot games as well. But thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, have a safe and a wonderful rest of your day.